In this video, we'll be looking at how to use the proxy provider inside of our Flutter applications. We'll have a login page like this, where we can put a username and a password, then hit the login button. That will take us to the home page. The home page will then display a greeting. And the way that I'll be getting this greeting and the username is with the use of dependency injection and proxy provider. So the app itself that we are building is not necessarily that important. It really just shows that we're able to take this string that we enter to the login page. We can save that in a service. We can then display the results of that as a provided entity inside of our homepage. Now we could do the same thing if we just used a global for this, but there's many reasons why we do not want to do that. And before we jump in too deep, I do want to say that we have the article for this video over at developer.school. So this does go through step by step exactly what we're going to be doing here on the video, but in a text form, which you can review at your own leisure. So with that said, let's go ahead and do the first step of creating a new Flutter project or adding this to a current Flutter project. So as always, we'll be running Flutter create and we'll call this Flutter proxy provider. This will create us a brand new blank Flutter project. We can then add the provider package to our pubspec.yaml. But before that, we'll say CD Flutter proxy provider and open this up inside of our editor. So let's head over to pubspec.yaml, scroll down to dependencies and inside of dependencies, we want to add provider. Provider is the only dependency that we'll need in this project and it does support web, iOS and Android. So go ahead and run this on the platform of your choice. The first thing that we're going to build is our login form. So we can head over to our file system. We can make a new folder called presentation and the widgets folder will have a new file called login underscore form dot dot. Our login form will be a stateful widget. So we'll make a new stateful widget. I've done that with the snippet from the plugin called STFUL. And then when I hit tab, I can create a new stateful widget. Check out my Flutter VS Code plugins video if you'd like to see the plugins that I use for Flutter. Our login form will be quite simple. We'll just need a text editing controller for the username. We can do the same thing for a password. We won't be using the password, but we might want to use it in the future. So let's have a password. We'll also need a global key for our form state to check to see whether the form is valid. And finally, we are going to have a bool of auto validate, which will set whenever we select the login button to start validating the form. We'll initialize these values inside of init state. So we'll set auto validate to initially be false. Our form key to be a new global key of form state and our username and password text editing controllers to be a text editing controller. We can then scroll to under our build and we can make a dispose method for when these username text editing controller is no longer used, we can dispose of that and the same for the passwords. With that in mind, we just now need to build a form. So our form will have a key of our form key it will have a child, which will be a column. And that column will simply have two text elements. So we'll have a text form field. The first one will have the controller of our username controller. Then we'll have a decoration of an input decoration with the label text of username. And we can copy this and do the same thing, but for passwords. Finally, we want a flat button. And that flat button has a child with the text of login and we'll give that an unpressed event. We'll scroll down to under our build method and we'll make a new void function called on login pressed. We can then inside of our on pressed call our on login pressed. Firstly, we can start off by setting the state to have auto validate equal to true. So we won't perform any auto validation until we've hit on login pressed. Then if our form is valid using form key current state dot validate, that will return us either a true or a false, depending on the current state of the form. We want to do something here. 
we can set up some very small validation for our form. He will have a string, which is called validate form field. This will take in the value and the field name. In a real application, we'd most likely want to handle our validation differently, perhaps with a validators class and so on. For our use case, we just want to check to see whether the value is empty. If it is empty, we just want to say that the field name cannot be empty. Otherwise, we'll return null. We can set the validator for both of our text form fields to get the value. And we'll say validate form field with the value and username. And we can do the same for our passwords. And that should be about it for our login form. We just need to handle this on login pressed. What we want to do is send this data as a callback to our login page. So for that, we'll need to firstly create a user entity. We can head over to our library. We can make a new folder called domain. And inside we can have a folder called entities. And the entity that we'll be dealing with at this point is a user. So we'll make user.dart. And inside of the user.dart, we can have a class called the user. It's going to be probably the most simplistic user possible. We have a string called username. And we can just simply make this required, but a named parameter for our user. And that about wraps up what we need for our user. We can register this as a callback if we say final function user on form saved. We'll need to import the user. And then we'll also need to make a constructor for this final field. We'll make the on form saved required by adding the at required annotation. And the final thing we need to do for this login form is set auto validate equal to the underscore auto validate variable that we made inside of this class. Next up, let's go ahead and make a new folder inside a presentation called pages. Pages will have our login underscore page dot dot. And this widget will be much more simplistic. It will just simply be a login page that extends stateless widget. Now you can make this in a multiple different ways. You can use the snippet. You can also just write this yourself and add the override for build. In here we'll return a new scaffold with the app bar that has a title of login. And our body can simply be the login form that we created earlier. So we'll import that. And you'll notice that we have this on form saved is required. Let's implement that. For now, we'll do nothing with the value of the user that we get back. We will also need to import the user. And to see something on screen, let's head over to main.dart and remove most of the comments and my homepage and replace this with our login page. We can also get rid of this debug show checked mode banner by adding that to false. And to make our login page a little bit better, we can add some padding, perhaps some padding of 16. We also may want to center, perhaps inside of a column, with the main axis alignment equal to center. That will center our login widget here on screen. So in order for us to see the user response here, we need to head back over to our login form now. And when we hit that login button, we want to access the on form saved by using widget on form saved. We'll pass in a new widget that we're creating at this point. The username will be equal to our username text editing controller dot text. So now when it comes to looking at our login page, when we have this on form saved, we can print the user dot username and we should see the username in the console. Let's type a username in and a password. Then as we can see inside of the debug console, we have our username. If we try and do something to the form, you'll see that password cannot be empty and it should auto validate. Next up, I want a way to persist this user across the application. So one way we could do this right now is just navigate to a home page and pass the user in as an argument. But this doesn't necessarily scale very well when it comes to thinking about an application that might have 20, 30 plus routes. Every time we're having to pass this down the tree and it doesn't really allow for a scalable application. We'll worry about that in a moment. The first thing we want to do now is create our user service to hold this user. And that'll be done in a folder called application. And then we want to make a services folder. Inside of our services, we'll have a user underscore service dot dot. 
And this is really simple. We just have a user service. That user service has a user. We have the ability to get the current user by creating a getter and the ability to set a user. Now we could just simply replace all of this and just have user, user. It's entirely up to you. Either way, this allows us to have this concept of a user service. We can then register this user with this service and then in another service at some point in the future, which we'll create called a greetings service, we'll be able to access this user injected with the proxy provider. We can now register this in main.dart if we say on material app, add a new widget called a multi-provider. The multi-provider has a provider's argument and inside of here, we'll add a provider with the create method of simply just creating a user service. Inside of our login page, instead of just printing the username, we can say provider.of, pass in the context, get the user service. This tells provider what we want to look up. We want to look up this user service and call the set user method. This set user will pass in the user that we get from the form. And we'll also set listen to false because we aren't listening to the response. We're simply just setting a user. We don't want to do anything else with this provider. Then after that, we want to navigate to a home page. So let's go ahead and create a home page and see whether we can display this data on screen. So inside of our presentation, we'll have a pages and a home page dot dot. This home page will be a stateless widget. So this will be a class of home page that extends stateless widgets. We'll then need to implement our build method. Our homepage will once again be very simple. It will have a scaffold, perhaps with an app bar that has the title of home, a body, perhaps with some centered text. And the centered text that we want is from our provider dot of context. We want to pass in the user service. And from that user service, we want the user dot username. We can add a static route. So we can easily navigate to this home page in the future. That will simply just be a wrapper over our material page route that we can use to build this page from the navigator, which we'll see in a second. So if we head back over to our login page, it's now really simple to just say navigator dot of context dot push replacement. And the replacement will be the home page. And we want to access the static method route on the home page. So if I log in with the username of test and the password of 123, we should now be able to see test in the middle of our screen. Ultimately, at this point, we haven't done anything with proxy provider. We've simply said that we can provide this value from screen A to screen B, but this has got nothing to do with proxy provider. But hopefully now we can see that we have this value inside of the user service and we're displaying this value using provider. So now if we had another service, for example, a greeting service, that simply said, hello test, we could pass in the user service as a value. Let's do exactly that. So inside of our application services folder, we'll make a greeting underscore service dot dot. And that greeting service will have a constructor. Inside the constructor, we'll have a required user service. And we'll set that to be a local value inside of this greeting service. So we'll initialize that to our underscore private user service to be equal to the one we passed in. Then this greeting service will just simply have a getter, which has a string of get greeting. And the greeting will be hello user service dot user dot username. We can now head back over to main.dart and we have this provider where we have this provided user service. But now we want to add a proxy provider. The proxy provider has an update method where firstly we have the context. Then we have whatever it is we're injecting. So in order to inject something, we have to add here. We'll say user service. And finally, the thing at the end is what we want to inject it into. So this would be, for example, our greeting service. So we get back firstly the user service and then we get back our greeting service which we aren't going to be using. So we can simply just put that as an underscore for now. This would represent a previous value, but we're not really interested in that at this point. So we'll simply say greeting service. We'll make a new one that has the user service 
that we've passed in. Now we have a really easy way to display a greeting to our user. We can go to our homepage and instead of using this user service, now we can just take in the greeting service and instead of listening to the user and the username, we want to instead hit greeting. If I sign in with the username of Paul Halliday once more and a random password, click login, we see our greeting on screen. This is because the user inside of our user service has been injected by our proxy provider into our greeting service. Anytime the user service updates with a new user or anything else, it will update our greeting service and we can be sure that it's injected the latest data. But what if now we wanted to have multiple injections, not just these two things? Can we do that? Well, if we added, for example, just something else here, we can't add the third item to this proxy provider. So what we need to do instead is have a proxy provider. And you can see here we have proxy provider 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. We can take a look at this if we had another service. Now this one isn't really that important for our context. And I'm just going to call this the cart service. And we'll just paste in from the article just to make this quicker because it's, like I said, it's not really too important about the use case here. Our cart service takes in our greeting service and the user service. And then of course we have this cart greeting and we have the ability to have a user. We could then inside of our main.dot we could have a proxy provider too that would have our user service, our greeting service, and our cart service. We'd need to import our cart service at this point. Then we could register the update method. The update method gives us the build context, the user service value, the greeting service value, and our cart service previous. That would allow us to create, which we're just going to rename for this period of time, called to be user service and greeting service. Finally, we can say cart service and add in both of our dependencies. Now we have the ability to, instead of listening to the greeting service on our homepage, to instead listen to the cart service. And then we have the cart greeting. And if we then add a username such as Paul with a random password and hit login, we can see that we have hello Paul. And we can prove that this is not just the greeting service that it's listening to. If we had a column and that column had a text of both the cart greeting and, for example, the dot user dot username, we could add a username of test and a password of 123. We then see the username of test and the greeting of hello test. I have added a center to this also. So hopefully this has helped with the understanding of proxy provider and how to inject dependencies across your application. Thanks a lot for watching. Do let me know in the comments section below what you'd like to see next in regards to Flutter, Ionic, or anything else. I'll see you next time.